All right. Welcome back. Pures Boatienvas. Both uh, live here from Södra Teater and online. We will now continue the Sami cultural, political, or policy summit and go over to the second part, uh, taking a look at perspectives on cultural rights. And we will start with uh, Ms. Bretis Edman, Senior Advisor at Sweden's National Human Rights Institution, who will present Sweden's national, new National Human Rights Institution and Indigenous Peoples' Rights within their mandate. So welcome, Britis. Can. can you help me? Yeah, now. Great. Uh, thank you so much <clears throat> uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to be here today uh, at the impressive event of the fourth Sami Culture Policy Summit. Many thanks to the organizers and also to the previous speakers we just heard. Uh, such in-depth knowledge and perspectives are invaluable for a new human rights institutions, uh, institution such as the one I represent. I represent Sweden's new uh, independent national human rights institution, Institutet för mänskliga rättigheter. Since September, uh, I'm a senior advisor and the focal point for Sami human rights, climate, and the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination. For many of you, uh, the relevant question isn't whether input uh, to us as an institute is invaluable, but whether the institute will be valuable for you, uh, for human rights of Sami people. Uh, in Sweden, and my response is yes, it has to be. Let me give a pr brief presentation about the Institute, its mandate and its role, and I will say a few words about uh, the Institute in, relationship, uh, in relation with uh, Sami rights. The UN recommends that all states have uh, a national human rights institution to strengthen the protection and the promotion of human rights within their jurisdictions. All human rights within their jurisdictions, I should emphasize. Following years of specific recommendations from various UN treaty bodies and uh, that monitor and assess how Sweden lives up to its human rights obligations, uh, and pressure from civil society organizations, and I believe some of those who've been part of that pressure are in the room today. Following all those years, the Institute is now a reality, if under construction. Uh, we're established by law uh, with the purpose to promote and protect human rights in Sweden in accordance with the Constitution, the European Convention on Human Rights and all other international human rights obligations binding on Sweden. We also have a specific role uh, as the independent national mechanism in accordance with the Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities. Um, the Institute is a new piece in Sweden's human rights infrastructure. And what we will do is to monitor, investigate, and report on human rights in Sweden. On the basis of the analyses we make, we will also make recommendations to the state, the duty bearer, the state at all levels, and the government. We will interact with organizations, of course, in Sweden, but we also have uh, a duty to interact with uh, international organizations uh, and participate in international cooperation. We will also promote human rights education, research and information across Sweden. 
One thing that we will not do, which I think is important to emphasize, is to examine individual complaints of human rights violations. Some institutes of our kind do, we will not. Uh, there are institutes of our kind in many countries, uh, and th there is an international standard for national human rights institutions called the Paris Principles. We have the, the intention to be fully compliant with the Paris Principles. These standards are very important to us, and we will be assessed by international, an international body on how we deliver against these rights, especially with regard to independence, impartiality, and integrity. It also means that we will have to be working on the relevant human rights challenges in the jurisdiction where we are operational, meaning here. Our mandate is and should be broad. We work on the full range of human rights. Um, but the extent to which we will work on individual themes is at this point not clear. Uh, we don't have uh, a, a long-term strategy yet. We will, will have one in place, uh, but there are some, uh, some parts of our organization that needs to, to be put into place before we can develop a strategy uh, that can fully inform our work. But we do live in troubled times, and we see a need for our work to be relevant in addressing the major challenges facing our world. I'm talking, of course, about the climate crisis and the need for a just transition. I'm also referring to democ democracy in decline, uh, threats to the rule of law and the polarization. Also, racism, increasing social inequality and discrimination. The rapid technological uh, development, automation, uh, artificial intelligence. These global trends give echo here in Sweden. They have manifestations here and wide-ranging human rights impact, uh, including, uh, not least, on Sami human rights. Early this summer, uh, the Institute undertook dialogue meetings with a range of Sami representatives from various fields. We came to listen to the views of uh, their human rights concerns. And the issue at, the, at these meetings that received the most attention was the increased and cumulative pressure on Sami traditional lands from climate change, but also from infrastructure projects, mining, forestry, often in the name of green transition. Our emerging work and our work ahead will be informed by these meetings that we had and the dialogue with rights holders. This type of meeting with rights holders, with civil society organizations, play an integral part uh, of the Institute and are extremely important to adding analysis, knowledge and on-the-ground experience. They also open for continuous exchange uh, and may evolve into collaboration over time into activities on, say, awareness raising on the UN Declaration on, on Indigenous Peoples' Rights or in the context of alternative reporting to the UN treaty bodies. We will engage with international human rights mechanisms and monitor the implementation of their recommendations in Sweden. In the coming year, in 2023, possibly into 2024, Sweden is up uh, for scrutiny in relation to two, two treaties. Uh, the Covenant of Economic, Social and Cultural Rights and the Convention against, uh, on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. The Institute's aim is to produce alternative reports to both these, and we will consult with rights holders in the process. Uh, so many of you expect to hear from us. 
Um, as we develop our work, we will also learn from our peers. Sister national human rights institutions across the world have already been established and have learned, have found their ways of working in effective ways. Norway's institute is something of a beacon for us. Structurally, uh, they are rather similar to ours. Uh, and I would like to, uh, many of you of course already know that they've had a strong focus on Sami rights and climate over the past years. And we will learn from them, we will follow from their example when we can. But I think also strides from Canada, uh, which we also heard, heard today, uh, will be important for us uh, to, to learn from and draw from as we build the, the operations. National human rights institutions often act as bridge builders between international and national, between civil society and government. This role, I believe, will be put to good use when connecting international human rights interpretations uh, with the needs of rights holders on the ground. In the Sami context, I believe that the development of the uh, interpretations of, for instance, Article 27 in the Covenant of, of Civil and Political Rights, to be technical here, uh, in protecting indigenous culture uh, is extremely important. And we will have to be abreast of these developments. Human rights aren't static, they are dynamic. And one of our roles will be to follow these developments and make sure that we put them to good use here. We will also have to explore, together with, with you and uh, other groups, um, the scope of free prior and informed consent. When is it, um, how it is being developed and how it should be used. And how to promote the term effective participation in decisions uh, affecting Sami lives and livelihoods. These are our uh, principles and rights uh, in evolution uh, and, and our role will be important to take these home and when we are fully operational, of course, be, uh, be uh, part of such an evolution. But that's nothing we can promise at this point. With the climate uh, crisis, the discourse of indigenous culture appears to gain momentum internationally. There's clearly a growing understanding that indigenous cultures and traditional knowledge carry some of the solutions we all need. And that indigenous rights but must be at the center of a just green transition. As a human rights institution, a national human rights institution, we may be well placed to amplify this discourse in the national context here in Sweden. The Institute is new, our learning curve is steep, and your contribution to where we are going is invaluable. It helps to shape us. And I also would like in conclusion to say our doors are open, so please be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Britis. Um, we will try to uh, get some time for questions after the session or the third speaker. So hold on to your question. Uh, now we will continue with Sami intellectual property. Why do others misuse it and what can we do about it? And to talk, talk about this subject, we have invited Rebecca Forsgren. She's uh, consulted within national and international laws regarding indigenous rights. Welcome. Not yet. Working now? Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. 
Uh, yes, my name is uh, Rebecca Forsgren. Um, I will talk about uh, the subject of intellectual property. Uh, and uh, <laughs> this very nerdy <laughs> subject that I hope that I will get you all interested in. Um, after I graduated from law school at Umeå University a couple of years ago, I started working at a, a UN specialized agency called the World Intellectual Property Organization uh, in a department that works uh, solely on uh, traditional knowledge. So working with indigenous peoples and uh, local communities, they call it, uh, to protect their uh, knowledge and their expressions. Because as uh, we might all know, even though like intellectual property might be a foreign concept to a lot of people, we can all know uh, what uh, the misuse is. We all have a feeling about that. Here in uh, Sápmi, we see that our uh, Gapta, for example, was used as a Halloween costume a couple of years ago. Uh, we have examples of our patterns being used as uh, interior designs on pillows. Um, we have, uh, we see that cheap copies of our handicrafts are being sold, uh, and marketing themselves as Sami handicrafts. Uh, that is misuse of our intellectual property. That is misuse of our cultural expressions, of our knowledge. So what I will go through here on uh, 10 minutes time uh, is a, it's a very, very basic understanding of what is intellectual property. Uh, what are the problems um, that exist for indigenous peoples when it comes to protecting their intellectual property? And then what is needed to enhance the rights specifically for uh, Sami people when it comes to our IP, um, our intellectual property? Um, so, intellectual property, it's the protection of ideas uh, or expressions. Someone says that it's, um, it's the creation of the human mind that you want to protect. You have different examples of this. Many of you might know about patents. That is something that protects like medicines, um, and innovations, for example. You have copyright, that is protection of artistic works, literary works, uh, paintings, and so on. Uh, different kinds of trademarks. We have a really good example here in Sápmi with the Dudji trademark, the Sami made trademark that the Sami council are working on. Um, and the trade secrets, a good example of that is the Coca-Cola recipe, uh, the secrets of, uh, of yeah, knowledge about something and how you do it. Um, all of these rights, like the patent, the copyright, and so on, they have their own rules. Uh, they have own, their own rules of the length of protection, how you get protection if you need to apply, and so on. And the basic idea why you have these protection is um, for the uh, inventor or creator to get the sole uh, or exclusive right to use their invention. Uh, and in exchange for that, after a certain period of time, maybe seven years or 70 years, uh, it will become free for all to use. Um, this is to like enhance innovation. We should be able to build on each other's creativity, which is a great idea. Um, but it is a Western system, and I will now go into explaining what the issues are for indigenous peoples overall. Uh, one requirement that is very difficult for us is the novelty requirement. So in order to get protection, something needs to be, it needs to be new, it needs to be kind of a new invention, or you can't just copy someone's drawing and get protection, like it needs to be new. And this is very difficult when it comes to traditional knowledge and traditional cultural expressions, it kind of says itself. It's, it's not new, that's what we want to protect. Um, it also needs to be a specific person or a specific group of people that gets protection. Uh, and for us, that would mean, okay, we have 
uh, yeah, what I'm wearing, for example. Uh, it's like, who, who made this in the beginning? Like, how many generations ago? And how many generations bef like after me are, is going to use this? We all want protection, but that is, you can't, that's not specific enough to say, well, seven generations from now, and I guess further, hopefully. It's, it's not specific enough, so that's very difficult. Um, that requirement is hard to fulfill. Uh, another difficulty that many indigenous peoples face is um, that we are divided by different countries because of colonization. So different countries would have their own jurisdiction. They would have their own rules of protection. And for, for us, for example, for Sami, we would have maybe have to apply in Finland and in Norway and in Sweden and in Russia to get protection for something. Uh, and then there is a huge issue about something called the public domain. And uh, what I mentioned before uh, that I used to work at this UN specialized agency, they are having negotiations um, with the majority of the countries of the world to, to protect traditional knowledge and cultural expressions. Um, and it's been 20 years <laughs> of negotiations and Samis have been there from the very beginning. Um, and the biggest issue that we, um, as indigenous peoples, talk about there is this thing about the public domain. Because that means that after a period of time, you have this protection, but then it becomes public to all. That's not something that we want. This is our knowledge, this is our these are our expressions, and we want to use them. It's not okay in 70 years that someone would start wearing my gatta, for example, who is not a Sami. So it's a huge issue. And the last thing I want to talk about uh, with these issues for indigenous peoples are the issues of resources. And I feel like that's a theme uh, for today. Um, you need money to register uh, pr for protection. And you need knowledge because this is, uh, this is a very like, specific field in law and uh, you need help in order to navigate uh, and to get this protection. And this is something that is lacking for a lot of indigenous peoples. So all in all, we can say that the Western system, as in many, many situations, uh, also the intellectual property system does not fit for indigenous peoples. Um, and the result of that is that our knowledge and our expressions are being misused and they are being uh, appropriated. So then, what is needed for uh, our rights, for Sami people's rights uh, to be enhanced, to, for us to protect our intellectual property? Um, in the Nordic countries, at least, the discussion about protecting Sami IP has uh, intensified lately, I would say. Um, it's getting more and more, we're getting more and more frustrated about the misuse and appropriation um, of our cultural expressions. And, um, uh, and we, and the Nordic states see that they need to do something about this. Um, we also have the situation where Sami ourselves has taken the lead in protecting our rights with, for example, the agreement bef between the Sami parliaments, the Sami council and uh, Disney. Uh, when it came to the Frozen 2 movie. So we are taking the initiatives and now I feel like the Nordic states are, um, are following. Um, what we need to do, um, I feel, is that we need to use, uh, well, we need to talk to other indigenous peoples because we, Sami and other indigenous peoples, we already have a really good idea about what it is that we want to protect and how we want to protect it. And uh, there are so many examples um, from all around the world where indigenous peoples have their own systems to protect their intellectual property. Um, and, and that is something that we can, we can use and we could, should be able to get back to, the, to our ways. Um, of protecting. And we have one example that is often take, um, used is uh, the protection of uh, the yoik. 
um, who would get the property rights if I were to register that? Uh, in the Western world, that would, be, uh, that would be me. I would get the protection because I created the yoik. But if I were yoiking my mother, for example, uh, according to me, that yoik would belong to her. But in the Western world, like, that would not be possible. So again, like we, would, uh, we need to make our own rules and we need to sit at the table. Um, and when I sit at the table, I mean sit at our own table. I don't want to have a place at, at another person's table or another state's table. Because when we talk about our intellectual property, uh, we have to decide what we want to do with it and how we want to protect it. So um, in Sweden, at least, something that is a word that is used a lot is this, that Sami should be able to influence matters that are important to us and so on. But I think that we should decide what we do with our intellectual property. I don't want to influence, I, I shouldn't have influence on how someone would use something that my ancestors has created and uh, my people owns. Like that is, up to, that is up to me and that is up to us. So, but what we need still from the Nordic states, at least, is that we need resources. And uh, uh, that is not a gift to us, that is a payback for what has been uh, stolen before. And now they need to pay back uh, some of that in order for us to maybe, as an example, would have our own intellectual property offices, um, create our own systems, have resources to create platforms where we can discuss what do we want to protect and how do we want to do it. Um, and I will stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, we will now go to the third speaker, uh, Ms. Karin Thomasson. Uh, she is a councillor of Region Jämtland Härjedalen, uh, responsible for, for cultural and Sami issues, uh, representing the Green Party. And she will talk about Kultur i Norr, uh, culture in the north of Sweden, regional work to strengthen the Sami culture. So the floor is yours, Karin. I hope this will work soon and I will put on my timer so I know that I keep my minutes because I will forget to look at the signs. This was more complicated than so now. Uh, well, thank you very much uh, for being invited to speak to you all, and uh, I'm speaking on behalf of Kultur i Norr, uh, as uh, Pariuna said. Um, this is a picture from my beautiful city, Östersund. It's taken from Frösön. You can see the nice northern light and the nice city lights. Uh, I, ha I have some written notes to my slides. But after the first part of this, uh, this day, I was completely blown away by the speakers. So I, I will have the notes here, but I will not look at them, I think, because <laughs> there were so many good things said, and I could recognize myself in a lot of what was said, especially by uh, Maria Utsi. Uh, I will first say something about Kultur i Norr and why we started um, it was actually, we started when there was the first uh, Sami Cultural Summit in Umeå. And there was a specific, uh, something happened there that made me very angry and made us very angry. Uh, the Sami parliament, uh, or representatives from the uh, Cultural Committee, were meeting with the Swedish Cultural uh, uh, Council. And we said, well, okay, the culture, Swedish Cultural Council is there and they're going to meet with the Sami Parliament Culture Committee. Of course, we should be there too to speak about what we can do on the regional level to support Sami uh, culture. And the Swedish Cultural Council said, no, no politicians in this meeting. We are only meeting with the directors from the regions. And we were like, what? 
but the Sami Culture Committee, they are politicians. But it was, we were mailing and I was really angry and trying to insist that we were not allowed in the room. So we were like, we have to, we have to form some sort of uh, network or platform for us who are elected to speak to other elected. Uh, so uh, ministers, the culture department, or people in the Swedish parliament, because we could not really accept that we that were elected were not allowed in the rooms where they were discussing Sami culture. This is completely crazy, but that was, that was the case. Uh, <laughs> so we had recognized some things that were very strange with the Swedish culture politics. I uh, try to remember what Maria Utsi said about the f uh, financing of, uh, of culture in Norway. It's quite similar in Sweden, but in Sweden the national uh, financing is canalized through the regions. So the regions, we get money from from national level, from the government, and then we distribute them to our regions. That is good, good in one way, but in another way, it caused problems, because we know, we knew our Sami artists in our region. We knew this, I knew the Sami artists in Jämtland, Heidelberg, and my colleagues knew their Sami artists in Västerbotten or Norrbotten. And when, when we wanted to support them with the money that we got from the government, it was like, no, you cannot do that because they get money from the Sami parliament. And, and then they will get money twice from the government. And we were like, yes, and what is the problem? Uh, I mean, the, the question is that they should get enough money to be able to perform their art. So um, that was, I will now, uh, uh, when, we, uh, when we started to work uh, 2019 on this Kultur in Ord, we started with this uh, position paper. We said we have to have some sort of program. If we are going to talk to the culture, Mr. Minister of Culture or someone, we have to have a sort of program to show what are our main points. And we have three focus areas, and the first one is, they are not in prioritized, but it has been like we have been working mostly with the, the Sami issues, actually. Um, and uh, the first very, uh, very, very important thing that we identified, we as a regional actors, we have to start to talk with the Sami parliament and other Sami institutions so that we, we say the same things. If we, if we go to the Ministry of Culture and we speak uh, on behalf of uh, our regional culture, for example, uh, they, ca they will not be able to say, yeah, but we just talked to the Sami parliament and they some say something else. So we have some sort of uh, uh, common issues that we are raising every time we meet with a minister or someone. For example, Giron Sami Theater as a national scene, that is one point that we always stress. Uh, we have had uh, a good dialogue and relation with the Sami parliament. Uh, we haven't met the new chairperson for the cultural committee yet, but I hope we'll do it soon. Uh, at various levels, work for Sami scenes and Sami centers, or on regional level, but also on national level. Uh, what we say when we meet with a minister of culture is, of course, okay, uh, the institution is uh, physically in the region of Jämtland, Härjedalen, or Västerbotten, or Norrbotten, but the Sami culture, question of Sami culture is a national uh, question. It's not a regional question. It's not we in the regions that should support uh, be responsible to support the Sami culture. It's a national question. So uh, the, the government has to put in more money to the Sami parliament. So the Sami parliament has more money to distribute to the, the artists. Uh, so that what is what we always say. Of course, the regions also support the Sami artists, of course. But uh, we also have uh, limited resources. Uh, we promote initiatives for Sami culture and we cooperate 
we have a cooperation agreement with Vjärmje uh, that will, uh, I will tell you something about that later. But uh, these are slides that we mostly show when we go to meet someone from the parliament or the government. So the first thing that we show, this is also a picture from uh, Östersund when we had this uh, big event uh, started in 2018, uh, how Sami culture is written about in the Sami parliament. Because as Maria Utsi said, uh, in Norway it's the same in Sweden, uh, we, art is like in different, I don't know, straws. I would say. It's uh, film, theater, music, uh, crafts, literature, but in the Sami society you cannot divide uh, culture in, in such a narrow, different uh, uh, str straws, not uh, stuprör. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean. So this is the first thing that we show so that the person we, will, we talk to will understand that they have to sort of let go of the, of the traditional way of seeing culture. So this was the, the pa position paper, and, the posi and in the position paper, I'm quite pride, proud of this, uh, how we wrote about the uh, Sami, because you, you must understand it's very difficult. Now I'm a Sami myself, but Sometimes I'm also a representative of the majority society. Uh, and, and then to write something about Sami culture in a, in a majority paper that are not, everybody has to accept it. But I think we found a good, a good uh, way of saying it, that the four northernmost counties are, are in traditional Sami territory. It's not that Sápmi is situated in the four more, uh, four more northern uh, counties, but we are situated in Sápmi. And uh, the indigenous Sámi cultural heritage is therefore an important part of northern Sweden's collective cultural expression. Increasing society's knowledge of indigenous peoples and national minorities both historically and contemporarily, is a priority for our democratic development and cultural diversity in the regions. And um, this is what we give to the, say, we meet the, with the Minister of Culture or her staff, uh, or his staff, but it's been female ministers the last years. Uh, so we show, uh, we show the, uh, what, uh, what the, the Sami parliament say, and we show this. Uh, and this was from the launching e event. And we were very lucky because it was in February 2020, just a month before the COVID. So we just managed in one year from the first uh, meeting in Umeå in 1919, in one year we were working on this position paper and we had a launching event uh, on the big uh, conference Folk och Kultur in Eskilstuna. It was very, uh, Sara Einak was also there to perform. And uh, it, it was very, so many people were interested in this. It, it was like a new, something new. And we were proud as uh, politicians from the four northern countries that, that we sort of, we represented something else I, uh, at this day, and we still do. I will not read all the text, but it says that we have an agreement with Vjärme K. And uh, Thomas will tell you something more about uh, what we have been working on with, with Vjärme K. But, but we also understand that, okay, we don't have the staff and we don't have the knowledge within our own organizations to, to deal with this in a good way. But then Vjärme K was there. And we uh, realized that, okay, if we support them, then can, they can do some work for us. So uh, they wrote this report, for example. Uh, but of course, it's not only the four regions together that are doing things, but every region in itself. I think just the fact that we are working in culture in order with Sami culture has also uh, raised an awareness in our own regions. So this is from um, uh, papers in uh, in the Jämtland här i Dalen, the culture plan, and also the uh, the regional development plan. I will not uh, read all of this. 
Uh, this is in uh, Norrbotten, how they are working with the consultation with the Sami parliament and Sami organizations, with the uh, young Samis. They are working with literature and, um, and language, and also, of course, supporting important institu institutions like Giron Sami Theater, Aite, Silver Museum Sami Norra, and uh, the Sami Education Center in Jokkmokk. Uh, this is from uh, Region Westerbotten. They are focusing on cultural heritage. And uh, that's very exciting because I met people from, uh, from Westerbotten, from Sundsvall and around the areas. They had no idea there had been Sami people there in, uh, back in the days. So uh, this is a, a very important work. Uh, and this is again a region of Jämtland Heidalen that's working mainly with the Galtje because Galtje is the, the institution that, can, uh, that have, has the contacts and means to work with Sami culture. Uh, and this is uh, Westerbotten, uh, working mainly with Eilis. Uh, and this is the report that I think Thomas will uh, tell you something about that we we asked Vjärmiko to produce this report for us, to be able to show, uh, when we were, when, go to the minister, for example, to show how it, uh, the difference between financing Sami cultural or financing traditional Swedish culture, if I may say, or majority culture. Uh, this, and that was the last one. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Karin. Uh, before I hand over to Thomas, we will uh, take some questions before we, we actually have time for questions now. So, does the audience have any questions? We have a microphone here. Yeah, we have a question. Is it on? Is it on? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, Karin, thank you. And I have a question directly to you. This position paper that, that uh, you have created, uh, is that a forever statement that the Samis are on the top line of, of, uh, of uh, getting support? Or is this just a little experiment and a project? <laughs> <laughs> until we changed it and we just had a meeting where they were not changing it. <laughs> so as long as the situation is like it is, uh, we will uh, have it as a priority. Questions? Questions? Over there. I don't have really a question, but I, I have uh, some worries that I need to express because after Karen's uh, presentation, it seems very worrying that there is uh, two different systems. One is the state and one is the region. And that those two does not communicate with each other, even if they are on the same place in Stockholm. And, um, and that they, uh, and they are using this, uh, uh, um, unsynchronized matters to not to give money to Sami culture, that, uh, who is responsible for that? To would, you like, would you like to comment that, Karin? Well, I, I think that uh, it, it's a problem that the, they it was suddenly realized when the questions were raised. So it was not something that they were planning from the beginning when they, they uh, implemented this Kultur Samverkans model and all the way of uh, f financing regional uh, culture. But it's something that we raise every time. And uh, we also had a meeting. They are now uh, uh, doing some sort of uh, looking over the, this model. And I know that several people, including myself, have raised this problem to the, the ones that are uh, writing, what is it, investigation, uh, na national 
or a parliamentary investigation about this over this system. And uh, I think that the investigators themselves didn't realize there was a problem, but now they know. So I hope there will be a result of this will be that there will be some adjustments. Yeah, m we have time for one more. Thank you. Uh, I, I, um, I want to comment on that. Uh, me and Maya Bonta here, we are the producers uh, of this summit. So we have uh, talked in with several people, but uh, connecting to the last question, that is a problem. And uh, the investigation is now ongoing. And uh, uh, if I can say hello to Nadia Ali or uh, Erika Monson, they were supposed to be here. They are here in the room. <laughs> Wow, so they are dealing with, that, with this. Uh, so could you give a, a short comment on that? Is that possible, that you look into this question? Yeah. Now you're a public person. Apparently so, <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, I can only say on behalf of our uh, investigations that we're looking into this matter right now and that we're visiting Norrbotten next week actually to start looking into this more specifically. Uh, but I can't give you any um, direct answers right now, unfortunately. No promises as usual. <laughs> but uh, the question is on the table that you have, you have uh, recognized this this uh, this problem that is pointed at by Cecilia and others. Okay, thank you. So, yes, thank you for the questions. We will continue now uh, with Mr. Thomas Bostad, who will present the five proposals to action balancing inequality from the report conditions uh, in uh, conditions uh, for Sami culture. Please, Thomas. Um, I like to echo what uh, Karin said. I think the first three speakers, especially Maria Otzi, was excellent. Uh, I kind of miss that temperament in my report. I wish it would have. Just a comment. And today I'll do a short summary of what I've, what I've done and give you five proposals for action. Uh, my background is I'm working at the Giron Sami Theater, and I've been doing that for five, six years now. Also been very active in VRMEK, writing a report, been on all the meetings before I ended up in the wheelchair. So what I looked at was two perspectives. One is the six cultural institutions that are the members of VRMEK, and I can say a lot about it, but I think the main thing here is the average operational support, Verksamhetsbidrag, is two million crowns. That is so tiny. It's nothing. If you compare it to Stockholm, it wouldn't even be a free theatre group, a smallest one. It's incredibly tiny. And the consequences are, as you can understand, uh, project dependency, which means you have to chase projects, you have to chase money, you don't do your core activities. Uh, and you cannot build an organization for long-term sake. And when you can't do this and that, competence goes away. So this is something that each of these organizations fight with every day. Oh. Despite that, we have a flourishing Sami artist situation today. Uh, it's in Sweden, it's international. I've been talking about earlier. And each of these organizations take tremendous responsibilities for the Sami community. They engage in local communities. We work on every level. We work with the young, with the old, with every, every Sami in their community. 
and they use the Sami languages, which is a big, big question. We heard that before as well. And uh, as I said, children and youth are given the possibility of taking part in their own culture. Without them, it would be lacking a lot. There's a lot of challenges uh, being a Sami cultural institution, but I want to highlight three of them. It's about the languages. Today, there are five in, in the Swedish side of Sápmi, uh, which makes every institution a multilingual institution. It's five Sámi languages, and they're Swedish. So six languages to operate on every time. This is something that really puts a stress on, but it's also very necessary for each organization. It's a challenge, of course, and it's expensive. Uh, competency, we talked about that. Uh, Norway is the big problem, because the situation is much better in Norway. You get better pay, you get better opportunity, so you go to Norway. This is something that everybody has to fight with all the time. And geography and borders, we heard about that as well. Sápmi is not northern part of Sweden, it's Norway, Sweden, Finland, Russia. And it doesn't harmonize with the culture policies. We have a national culture, poli culture politics that really does not take into consideration Sápmi as a border. And it's big. So if you want to do something in Sápmi, even on the Swedish side, it's more than half the country. And as Karin said, I think you gave a good uh, background to why the AMECO was uh, uh, started and how we collaborate with the Culture de Nord. And I think it's really promising that uh, the initiative comes from the northern regions. The problem is here in Stockholm. The problem is the state and its government agencies. Sorry, but this is how it is. Uh, the example here is easy enough to understand the culture budget for Sweden between 1999 and 2020 increased by 240%. For the Sami parliament, the same thing, 24%. It's 10 times as high. I think it speaks for itself, and we need to change that. So, I take all five at, at the same time. So these are the five proposals. The first one is about resources. We need to strengthen the whole Sami culture life with money. And you need to start now. And you need to do a substantial increase. And this is the responsibility of the state, I think, the Swedish state. Uh, the other four proposals are dealing with the challenges and how to solve them. So they are a way of uh, addressing the challenges and trying to solve them. At the moment, this is what I'm doing, is uh, I'm trying to write up how it should be done. These are only small suggestions at the, at the moment. It will soon be more. But it's about how to share competencies, training, learning, and exchanges. It's about how to work with languages from a cultural context. Uh, how do we find translators? How do we, what kind of coaching do we need? How do we work together on this? Uh, and it's about arrangeurer, <laughs> the Sami organizers, who are very uh, spread out. They don't talk to each other and they don't really have a network to learn and be better. So this is also an issue. And also the thing that you cannot actually find very easily information about Sami artists of any kind. So this is something that we're also trying to achieve. And the final one is about establishing a nomadic meeting place. This is also a response to the lack of meeting places all over in Sápmi. And this is about borders and geography. We need to change that. 
So one way of doing that is by moving the meeting around in SAPMI. And finally, I would like to say that this is the reality. The opportunity and the responsibility is on my side <laughs> and on the SAMI side as well. I mean between. Uh, but I think it's shared, and I think the discussions we have today and in other days is really necessary. Otherwise, nothing. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, do we have any questions for Thomas? Yeah, down here. Mikael. Thank you very much, Thomas, for this very good presentation. Uh, I, uh, my name is Åsa Wiedekroik, and I work as uh, an author in, in that way, and a publisher, and in that way I am uh, working with art. But I'm also a, a researcher and a scientist, and I took my degree this year. Um, I even though I agree with you that there is too little resources, too, uh, too tiny budgets, I have come to the conclusion that it's so much easier to get funded for art projects than for research. And the reason for that is, is that as a summer researcher, there's no way to go unless you have very good connections with certain uh, researchers and, and between the universities and uh, the, civ uh, the civil uh, society, Sami society, I think there is a gap. Uh, uh, I wonder if you could position, because I'm really hunting for some work. <laughs> I would like to uh, uh, not only apply for project money and work as an artist. I also want to work as a, research, a researcher and I want to benefit uh, the Sami society. Could you please position <laughs> my, my um, wish in your field? Do you have suggestions? Do you have comments on that? Please. <laughs> Question? <laughs> um, a really hard question also. Um, I think what is happening right now is, is the culture field is opening up a little bit. There's a change happening now. I've been doing this for five, six years. It's actually the last one, two years. I can see a big shift. Perhaps there will be a shift also in academia. I'm quite sure there is a need for people like you, we met before, uh, in one of the proposals here, I would say. I would say a competence center would benefit greatly from a researcher like yourself. So apply to, to Jarker. <laughs> <laughs>